Carlia. Welcome to Women of War. <laughs> it's Monday, and um, all right, amen. <laughs> Before we get started, hi, honey. Before we get started, let me open a prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you are God. That there is no one else like you. None. None can even compare. And I thank you for your word. That it's truth and life. And I pray tonight as I yield myself to you that you would use me as a vessel, speak through me, that we would all have ears to hear and eyes to see what it is that you are trying to say. And I thank you in the mighty name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I was going to do something else. And as I was typing it up, um, God completely went somewhere else. So I'm going to go with God. Amen. Um, I want to read from Luke chapter 4. And it's verses 1 through 20. So it's a little bit of a lengthy scripture. But bear with me here. Okay, we're going somewhere. <laughs> All right. It says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up to a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you, and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, and all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and unto him only shall you serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So, the devil knows the word of God. Amen. He quoted it to Jesus. Verse 14. Jesus, then Jesus returned in power of the Spirit to Galilee, and the news of him went out through all the surrounding regions, and he taught in their synagogue, synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and at his custom, and his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all were in the synagogue fixed on him. I said I was going somewhere. I read all that just 
<laughs> that last sentence. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. So my message title for tonight is Fixed and Focused. Amen. Fixed means firmly in position, determined, established, set, not subject to change or variation. Amen. So being fixed means you are firm in your position. You're not subject to change. And this whole thing, Luke chapter 4, 1 through 20 that I just read, Jesus was fixed. Okay, no matter what the enemy came at him with, he was fixed. He was firm in his position. He was determined. He was not subject to change. Amen? Amen. Focus means the concentration of attention or energy on something. So, we should be concentrating and determined to be firmly in position and not subject to change, but be constant in God. Amen? This requires us remaining fixed and focused, us remaining firm in our position in the Word, in God, not subject to change based on what the enemy brings our way or based on anything that anyone else brings that we might be going through. We remain fixed and focused. We don't move. We stay focused on God and we are not subject to change. We are only subject to the word of God. Amen? Amen. When we are fixed on God... When we are not fixed on God, I should say, our focus is off. Because if we're not fixed on Him, then we're focusing on something else. Amen? And we end up in trouble. When God made us, He chose to make us in His likeness. He made us that way so that we could have fellowship with Him and Him with us. God's whole reason for creating us was to have fellowship with Him. It was because He wanted family. Amen? So yes, sin came in, but the master designer's plan did not change. Neither did the master. So the plan that God had all along for Jesus to come and die so that we could live life in heaven, none of that changed. That plan did not change. Neither did God. He is the master. And he changes not. Amen? People change. Because sin was allowed in, their focus got shifted so they couldn't remain fixed. You can't remain firmly in a position of something without being subject to change if you're not focused on it. Whatever soaks up your focus is what you are going to be firm in and on. Amen? Think about that. Think about that. When our focus is shifted, we are no longer fixed. So our foundation shifts. Amen? When we are not fixed and focused on God's word, because his word is our solid foundation. And if we aren't fixed on that, because we're not focused on God, we're focused on something else, the whole foundation of our life shifts. Amen? It shifts to whatever it is that we are focused on. Amen? Amen. When we are fixed and focused on God, everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we are confirms His Word and conforms to His Word. Our lives should conform to the Word of God. Amen? So when we speak, we are speaking his word. We belong in his presence. In his presence, we are focusing on him. And the more we practice being in the presence of God, the more we master it. Amen. So I don't know if anybody's ever heard about this 10,000 hour rule, but it became very popular. It went something like this. 
It takes 10,000 hours of intensive practice to achieve mastery of complex skills and materials. Example, like playing a violin, playing a piano, playing a trumpet, you know, whatever it is, learning sign language. I mean, whatever it is, it takes 10,000 hours to master it. Amen. So if we want to master the word of God, then we need to put time into it. We need to remain fixed and focused on the word of God. Amen. So we can become masters of that word. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual things, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. What does this require? Being fixed and focused. If we get focused on something negative that someone said about us, for example, we dwell on it richly, don't we? We think and we think and we think and we think about what was said. Next thing you know, we're singing a tune in our hearts, like the, like that scripture says, is singing spiritual hymns. But we're not singing spiritual hymns. We're singing hymns about whoever it was that said whatever they said. Amen. <laughs> but we're not doing that with grace. When we do that, we are focused on what was said, so we're fixed on it. Amen. It becomes something or someone that replaced the focus we had on God. Now, if we have a new focus instead of God, and instead of letting God's word dwell richly in us, then something's replaced it, right? So if we're not focused on God's word, if we're not fixed on God's word, then something else has taken our focus. Go get your focus back. Amen. Get it back. Because we need to be focused on God's word. We need to see through the eyes of God. If we are fixed and focused on him, then we are able to see things as he sees them. Amen. So instead of seeing through our eyes, we are seeing through the eyes of God. We'll be able to, to see others the way he sees them. Why? Because God does not focus on the no can do's. He focuses on the can-dos. Amen. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And we may be going through some difficult times or have difficult areas in our lives, but it's okay to tell God you're struggling and that you need some help being fixed and focused on these areas. Amen. He wants us to come to him. He wants to help, but he's a gentleman. He won't intrude if we don't ask. Amen. We've all been touched by God at some point in some point in our life. So think of the times in your life when you wanted to stay right where you were at. Because God was moving so magnificently in your life. Amen. That you just didn't want it to end. God didn't want it to end either. Amen. God desires that we live in the realm of the miraculous. Amen. He wants us to live in his presence every minute of every day so that we can move in the miraculous. If our focus remains fixed on him and his word, then it's totally possible. We should be walking in the spiritual realm all the time. That's not to say that you're going to be so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. No, I'm saying balance yourself out. How do we balance ourselves out? Staying fixed and focused. Amen. Check out his word. It'll tell you how to balance your life. After all, Jesus was able to balance everywhere that he went. Everywhere he went. I don't know about you, but I want to be like Jesus. I want all of me to be so completely emptied so that he can completely fill me up. Amen. I want all of him. You know, there's a song they sing in church. It says more of you and less of me. But when I'm singing it, I'm saying all of you and none of me. 
because I want all of God living on the inside of me, moving, amen, through me. I want to live in the miraculous, but the only way I can do that is by, by being focused and fixed, focused on his word, focused on his presence, focused on spending time with him, focused on the Holy Spirit, focused on what Jesus did, focused on the Father. I mean, I need to be fixed, amen? So if my focus is right, I'm fixed right. Jesus was blessed everywhere he went. How did he do that? By staying fixed and focused on his Father. Now, there were some people who didn't think he was a blessing. And there may be some people who don't think we are a blessing. <laughs> but if you know that you were created as a blessing and to be a blessing to others, then it shouldn't matter what other people think, even the devil. Did you get that? Did you get it? If you know that you were created to be a blessing to others, then it shouldn't matter what anyone else thinks thanks. Amen. My life is a gift that God gave to my parents. Whether they received it as a gift or not, it goes back to the beginning of time when God created Adam. When God created Adam and Eve, he blessed them with children. But God created Adam to be a blessing to him. Amen. And then God created Eve to be a blessing to Adam. Are you, see? you, are you seeing the pattern? So we are all created to be blessings to others. Amen? We, can, we can't be a blessing if we're not fixed and focused on God. Why? Because we will replace our focus on Him with whatever else distracts us. Whatever else distracts us. So we can't get distracted. Amen? Make a choice. Make a choice. I want to encourage you. Make a choice today, tonight, today. Some places it's today, some places it's tonight. <laughs> Make a choice to be fixed and focused on God, amen, on his word. And you may need to do this several times a day, you know, sometimes every minute. It depends on what it is that you're working on because we all have things we're working on, amen. But bring your face back to focus. You know, it's like when we're little kids and we're looking all over and our parents will do this, you know, and they, and they bring, your, bring your face back to focus. Bring it back to focus. Focus. Remain fixed and focused. Do whatever it takes to stay fixed and focused on God. Do the 10,000 hours, amen, in the word to master it. Do 10,000 hours of spending time with God to master it. Amen. And like I said, the more you practice, the more you master. Amen. Amen. Okay. That was completely not <laughs> what I had planned. Um, I was going to talk about, I was going to do a series on the attributes of God and maybe that'll be for next week i don't know wherever the holy spirit goes is where he goes i just follow his leading and as like i said as i was writing up the first attribute all this stuff just started blowing out and i was just typing away typing away typing away, typing away. <laughs> so i had to really look at my notes because i didn't have time to really absorb because i didn't want to be late but remain fixed and focused you know if you take anything away remember that fixed is a firm position that you stand in that is not subject to change. What is the one thing you can stand on that is not subject to change? God's word. God never changes, ever, ever. He is the one constant, the one stable. We can count on him. We can stay firmly fixed on him and focus is the concentration of our attention to something so we're going to concentrate our attention to god to his word so that we can be firmly in position and not subject to change amen <laughs> amen that message was for me <laughs> Alright, 
I'm going to close in prayer. Father, I just thank you. I thank you that you come through no matter what. You come through for each one of us in the way that we need it the most. And your timing is always perfect. We may not see it when we're going through it, when we're walking in it. But if we remain fixed and focused on you, we know that the end result will always be your best for us. So I thank you, Father. I thank you by way of your Holy Spirit for showing us how to remain fixed and focused on you. To take our position and not have it be subject to change. I thank you, Father. Bless the hearers that are on now and that will jump on later. Bless them abundantly and beyond what they can think or imagine. In the mighty name of your precious son, Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, thank you, honey, for jumping on. I love you. <laughs> I say this all the time, I'm gonna say it again. My husband is my biggest supporter. I appreciate him beyond words. He's like my my cheerleader, my go-to, my get up and do. And um, he's my balance, amen? Amen, all right. I thank you all. I will see you on Women of War tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time and 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Mornings with God. And then I will see you guys on Thursday here again and Friday at Boots Camp. Thanks for jumping on.